Here's the March recap of videos that were posted on the Freeze Dry Business channel in case you missed it. I'm also gonna give you some intel on who I talked to in the freeze drying community space, entrepreneurs, different manufacturers, all the works that are gonna have content coming out on this channel, and I'm really excited about to share with you. I'm also gonna give you one of the things that I tried in my freeze dryer, a recipe using freeze dried strawberries, and hopefully that inspires you to try different things for your business as well as for your own home use since we all have freeze dryers. Now, if you're just discovering this video and you're not a subscriber, I'd encourage you to subscribe to this channel. We're all about freeze drying, specifically freeze drying as business. And so all the videos are to connect you with people who are doing amazing things in the freeze drying space as well as tips and tricks. Now, the backdrop for today is along the Boise River. I feel fortunate to be in Boise. I've lived here my entire life pretty much and I really love the aspect that we can be close to the river. I work close to here. In fact, my office is really close to here. And so I wanted to capture this video for today in nature because it's a really nice day. Now the Boise River, if you don't know this, it starts out at a reservoir that's called Lucky Peak Reservoir. There's a lot of recreation for boating that goes on there. And then as you travel down the river and they let water through, it ends up going into the Snake River Basin where the Snake River is along the Oregon-Washington-Idaho border. And the Snake River traverses all the way through Oregon. You can follow it all the way along, all the way till you get to Portland and Vancouver, and then it empties into the Pacific Ocean, which is awesome. In today's video, we're gonna recap the videos that I did in March. And the first video was ice cream. I had done a video when I first started this channel about how to freeze dry ice cream, but the audio was really bad, so I wanted to recap what my process is like. And if you haven't watched that video and you haven't even tried, ice cream. I'd encourage you to watch that video. I've really tried to perfect my process to make sure all the ice cream is scooped very cold, the trays are cold, and everything is done so that it's a very smooth process. Now, ice cream is actually one of the more tedious types of items. It doesn't have the crazy high profit volume that candy does, but it's a really fun product that you can kind of change up in your product mix and offer on a limited time basis. And that's the great thing about freeze dryers is you can change things up and add different things to your lineup, even if it may not be super cost prohibitive. Second video, the beginner's blueprint to freeze drying fruit. And that video was really focused on three main fruit items that I like to freeze dry for my freeze drying business, and that's blueberries, apples, and strawberries. Now there's a couple other fruits that I do tend to freeze dry, and that is the bananas and pineapple and raspberries. The bananas, I usually do a strawberry banana mix, but um, in this video, I specifically focused on a blueprint so that if you're a beginner to freeze drying fruit, whether you're in a home use or you're running a business, you know exactly what type of tools to use, the quick methods that I use to prepare those types of fruits because blueberries need to be poked, the skin of the blueberry, they do need to be poked or punctured in some way because I've shown a video that I'm gonna show right now of the differences in the finished product of freeze-dried blueberries that aren't poked and freeze-dried blueberries that are. And if you poke the skin of the blueberry to release that water, then once that vacuum pressure and the freeze-drying process starts, it'll extract that water a lot better and it won't cause a more uh, exploded look that I describe in the video. So check that out. It was a really fun video to do. And the third video that I released is the six major mistakes that I've seen in businesses that can cause you to fail early on. And in that video, I cover all bases from, you know, having the wrong type of reasons for getting into your business, financials, maybe even the location. There's some states that actually restrict what you can do in cottage food. And so if you're just trying to start out and you're trying to sell to farmer's markets and things like that, then it might be actually very limited in terms of starting a business. So you're gonna have to actually have the full investment of a commercial kitchen and that can be a lot more costly. So definitely watch that video if you wanna to try to avoid the mistakes that most businesses make if they uh, don't cover all their bases. Now again, if you like the video content that I'm producing here, give this video a thumbs up right here. Even though this is a recap video, it helps me understand whether you're enjoying the recap so that you can have some quick highlights of the videos that I produced and that way I keep on doing. I'm gonna to try to do it throughout this whole entire year. All right, the next part of the recap is something that you're not really in the know of if you're watching this channel, is the people that I'm talking to behind the scenes to prepare for upcoming video content. And so I'm really excited to share with you who I've talked to. All right, the first who's who is I went to Las Vegas, Nevada for some R&R, &R, 
And in that period of time that I was there, I actually went and visited with Josh Kingdon, who is the owner of Sweet Potato Awesome. I did a video interview, one of the first interviews that I did on focusing on entrepreneurs in the freeze drying space. Josh is a wonderful guy. Uh, he was looking into the priesthood and then discovered that uh, he was just drawn to start this business, freeze drying sweet potatoes. I went and visited his facility. I had just done the interview. I hadn't met him in person and just a wonderful guy, very genuine, and has built this business from the ground up. He actually bought one of the original Harvest Right freeze dryers in 2013, and now he's got some really fancy uh, prototypes that are actually gonna be released here very soon by Harvest Right of some very large commercial machines. And uh, I'm excited that I'm gonna be sharing with you one of those machines uh, because I went and visited Harvest Right back at the end of January and I got to see one of these machines in person and, and so when they release that and, and uh, give me the permission to kind of release it when they're going to do their public release, I'll share with you that video. But uh, Josh is a great guy. A couple things that I, I just gathered from him is that he's persevered for almost 10 plus years on this business and he's finally at the point of, you know, basically kind of building that profit up. And so he's built up a ton of great relationships across the grocery states. He's doing strawberries now, and uh, he's got uh, quite a few employees now as well. So it's really exciting to see that, and it was great connecting with him. The second person that I talked to was really unexpected. In fact, this particular company had reached out to Josh at Sweet Potato Awesome just to kind of connect with him. And through that, they got in touch with me and I was down there in Las Vegas and I said, why don't you come by our facility and learn more about us? And that company is EIS Automation. And this company is somewhat of a, a consultant for discovering how automation can really help speed up and scale your business. Now, I'm not really familiar with automation and machine learning and anything like that. I don't have any machines for my freeze drying business. But when I went there, I talked, and I'm gonna share a video about this. I'm, I'm actually working on the editor right now as we speak. And I talked to one of the sales engineers, his name's Sam, and he walked me through the entire facility. Now what EIS Automation does, it's, it's a full suite consulting company for automation. So it doesn't matter whether you're looking for automation to help you put stickers on labels, package product, get product into the packages and build an assembly line, or maybe it's putting the logos on packaging, or maybe it's palletizing all your boxes for wholesale. This is what they do, and they do it all remotely from Las Vegas. So you don't actually have to travel there. They don't have to travel to you. They work with you, and you can tell them what the size of your facility is and say, we need automation for this small of space to basically do this X part that we're spending way too much time manual labor on and they can design a full plan and proposal for you about that. And I'm gonna share really kind of everything that Sam talked to me about in the interview in a future video that I'm gonna come up with. One of the things that I asked him in the interview was, who makes the most sense to contact you? And he said that it's really anybody and everybody who's at the point of, you're, you're basically trying to figure out if you need more employees or you need to automate a process through machines. So if if you're tired of packaging um, all that types of candy or fruit or things like that, and you need to just know at what point would a $50,000 investment, let's say, of a machine to do that and be able to package 100 products every five minutes or 30 products every minute, then this EIS automation company is really what's there for you because they're not gonna just go and tell you that you need to spend all this money <clears throat> they're gonna propose, hey, this is what automation could do for you. Now, the third company that I connected with is a company that I think a lot of you know of if you're in the freeze drying business space, but if you're not, it's probably someone that you've seen on TikTok and YouTube, and that is the company Trendy Treats. I talked with the both owners, their husband and wife, it's Jesus, he goes by Zeus, and Mel, his wife. And what I'm gonna bring to you is and what I'm gonna to bring to you on the content and the interview that I captured with them is not just about their background and story, but how they become successful in the freeze drying space in a little under four years. They started back in 2020 and they've grown to almost five and a half million dollars in revenue in 2023. 
They've really got a handle on the social media side. They're gonna share with you uh, tips and tricks on the social media side, how to get started. They're gonna share with you different characteristics for what it has taken to get to where they're at today. And I just thought it was great that they were an open book. They're not afraid or they're not shy of the camera and talking about this. And they really liked me coming down there to share their story, but also um, I think I'm just really encouraged right now with the direction that this channel is headed and that I can be more of that connector for you behind the camera as well as the people that are doing freeze drying. If you know of someone that you really want me to interview, either that be that Zoom call or even in person, please send me an email to freezedriedbusiness.com. That's my website. Send an email to me or go to freezedrieddepot.com, which is my business, and let me know or in the comments who you'd like me to interview. And I'm finding this world fascinating and I'm gonna bring it all to you. So again, help me out and let me know in the comments or in an email of who you'd like me to interview uh, to, to kind of expand on, on their story. I would love that. Now the final piece of this recap is I'm gonna share with you a recipe that I tried and that is I baked a strawberry cookie. I took regular sugar cookies and then I mixed it up with freeze dried strawberries. I used a recipe that I found online and it actually worked out really good. And because of that success, I actually am going to create a video on how I created that recipe and it's gonna fully walk through everything that I did and then we'll do a taste test. I think it's gonna be really fun because it's different than all my other freeze drying videos. I'm gonna focus more on the recipe and using more practical uses of freeze dried fruit, freeze dried candy, things like that. Once again, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not a subscriber, hit the notification bell so you can be notified of future videos and I'll see you in the next video.